Hey guys, it's Jessica Hayes. For those of you that are new to my channel, I am a makeup artist and I also do microblading as well. So last week I shaved off my eyebrows and I thought while I have this blank canvas, it would be a really good idea to show you exactly how I create a brow shape using the techniques that I use when I do a microblading client. So if you would like to see how to draw brows on a blank canvas, then keep watching. So if you guys have been following my channel for a little bit, you probably know I already have my eyebrows microbladed. So yes, I did shave the hair off, but obviously I still have a little bit of a shape underneath left from the microblading. This is about after a year. So just like in traditional brow cover up, I'm just going to be using a little bit of this peach concealer and then I'll put a little bit of my own skin color concealer over the top of it and then we'll go on with the eyebrows. So the first step that I'm going to be taking for this is to grab a piece of dental floss. It doesn't matter what kind of dental floss. You could even use string, any type of string for this, just something that is string-like. So I'm going to take this dental floss and then I'm going to be grabbing a nude colored pencil, any nude colored pencil. You can use a white pencil as well, just something lighter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that pencil and I'm just going to start drawing it onto the dental floss. So you can see there that there is a little kind of colored piece on the dental floss. And I'm going to use this to mark out my guide on the face. So to start the eyebrow off, we're going to use three measurements. So we're going to use one for the front of the brow, one for the arch of the brow, and one for the end of the brow. So the first measurement can kind of be arguable of where to start. Personally, this is where I like to start. This isn't a stencil for how the perfect brow absolutely has to be. This is just how I like to draw brows for myself and for my clients. Usually I start from the little nub on the nose right here, like the width of the bridge right here. I remember back in the old magazines, they used to say, hold a pencil from the corner of your eye to the corner of your nose and that is where your brow should start. But that actually makes the brows very far apart. So I like this option a little bit better. So I'm going to start from kind of the bridge of my nose right here. And I'm just going to hold that string along the face and make a little mark. For the sake of this video, I'm actually going to do this in blue from now on so that you guys can actually see what's going on. If it's for yourself at home and you can see a little bit better and closer up, uh, go ahead and use nude because then you won't have so many lines you'll have to remove after your makeup's done. So let's try that again with the blue. I'm just gonna use that as a little marker right there. And then for the arch, I'm going to line it up against my iris right here, the edge of my iris. Looking straight ahead in the mirror, you'll find the edge of your iris and then just mark there. And then for the end of the eyebrow, I'm going to take the string from the corner of my nose to the corner of my eye and mark that off like that. So we have those three lines there right now. You can extend them a little bit farther down if you're newer to this and you really feel like you need this certain map. But I'm just going to use them almost as a visual guideline. So if you truly don't have any eyebrows and you're not sure of where the bottom of your eyebrow should start, you can see naturally the eye kind of has this curvature in here, the little hollow. Uh, usually you'll see that you have a little bit of a brow bone here as well. So a general rule, I just kind of press my finger in there just to see where it should be. And I'm actually going to start it just a little bit above this crease right here because you don't want them too far down. If the inner eyebrow goes too far down, it can give you a little bit of an angry look. So using that twine, I'm going to kind of go up from the, my lash line up like that and just drag it across there to give us a little bit of a guideline. We still have one more line to do, but until we create the front fluff of the eyebrow, we can't get that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and start creating the eyebrow. So I'm actually going to be using the new Kat Von D Super Brow in dark brown and medium brown for this eye look. I usually like to use two colors for this because I feel like it just gives a little bit more 
dimension to the eyebrow. So those are the two colors that I've chosen, dark brown and medium brown. These colors look fairly warm in the pot, but once they dry down, they turn to more of a cool color. Sometimes I like to use the colors dark brown and graphite, which is a black, but I don't want my brows too strong today. So, so I'm gonna start off with the dark brown color. And this truly, truly is my favorite, all time favorite angle brush. This is so damn skinny, you can create hair strokes with it. I have some other angle brush that I've loved in the past. Uh, the Smith angle brush is nice and tight as well, but as you can see, the difference between that and that, you will get much more of a hair-like appearance using this brush, the Kat Von D number 70 brush. Okay, so I'm going to start with just a few little flicks in the front of the eyebrow. So I'm starting down and just kind of wisping up those hair strokes. So the front ones are a little straighter and then I'm slowly starting to angle them a little bit towards the center of the brow. After about four strokes, I'm just going back in and re-wetting my brush with more product. So I'm just kind of creating the height that I want with the front of the brow there. Okay, so now that we have the height of the eyebrow, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use that height to see where I want my arch to lie. So taking the string to the very front hairs of the eyebrows. All right, so I'm just gonna swipe it across that way. Make sure you measure it up evenly on both sides. So it's on this side and this side. So this line here is actually going to show you where the arch should be. To me, this isn't a super duper necessary step. Uh, personally, I like more of a straight across arch. I like a really straight eyebrow, but if you do want that kind of natural looking arched brow, I'm just going to redraw the blue on the pencil again. You can redraw the nude on your pencil again. So I'm going to take the front of the eyebrow right here where we started the brow underneath it and I'm going to pull it across this way and this is going to show us where our tail should end. So obviously using a blue pencil is not ideal if you have already done all of your eye makeup, but you can always do your brows first and then do your eye makeup. If you're using a nudie pencil, it's not as big of a deal. As you can see right there, that has given us the point of where to end the brow. This is going to be the tip of the arch. This is also going to be the tip of the arch and where we end the brow over there. Obviously everyone's face shape is very different and also our faces are not symmetrical. I've met so few people that have a very symmetrical face. So sometimes you can draw these perfect eyebrows on and you know, one eye can be up a little higher than the other, which with my face is definitely the case. So I will have to do a little bit of tweaking after this measurement. So I'm going to go back into shaping the eyebrow. I'm just actually going to do a little bit of a line from what we've created here up to where we want the arch. And then I'm going to pull it back down to where the arch is meant to end. So to me, that's a pretty high arch, a lot higher than I'm used to. So I'm going to draw it like that, but in the end, I'll probably pull this down just a little bit, uh, just because like I was saying, I, I prefer a straighter eyebrow. Not everyone does though. So some people love this arch. So now that we have all of the measurements, let's go ahead and create the eyebrow. So the actual height of the brow is kind of left undetermined. It just really depends how thick you want your eyebrow. Obviously you want it to, start off thicker in the beginning of the brow, taper off a little bit in the center, and then go a little bit skinnier for the tail. So every time I'm using a little flicking motion, I am going in the direction that hair would grow all the way 
up to the middle of the arch and then I'll start to bring it down towards the tail. So be patient with this step because it definitely takes some building, especially if you are just going to be creating tiny little hair strokes. So now that I'm towards the arch of the eyebrow, I'm going to start directing the flow of hair back towards the tail. Now is the time to bring down my arch just a little bit. So I've just made a little line across there and I'm just gonna do some little flicks to make it look more natural. If you like, you can just kind of use the edge of the angle brush just to clean up the underneath of the eyebrow. Personally, this definitely is more of a look. It definitely isn't more of a natural look. So if you're going for more natural, then skip this step but I do like how it just tidies up the bottom of the eyebrow. So I'm just gonna use the flat of the brow brush just to kind of stamp a little bit of a line underneath the brow. And then this just creates more of a crisp. I like how it just tidies it up a little bit. So nice and crisp underneath and then fluffy on the top. So that is one brow kind of done. Um, I'm probably going to go back through and then add a little more of the medium brown and I might pop some graphite in there for, for more dimension. So I have a little bit of concealer build up to deal with right now. If you were doing this over shaved brows or if you have no brow hair in that area, you will get more of an easy flow to that hair stroke. So now that we have on this side, we've kind of built a little bit of the front, not the whole thing, but I'm just going to use my lash line right here drawing upwards the front i'm just gonna see where we made that arch finish right there i kind of use that as a guideline but i feel like i'm already on the right track with making the arch the same height as this one uh, we did lower this arch a little bit so i'm just going to use this as a guide right here this little line as a guide right here Okay, so that's where we finished our arch. And that's where we'll finish our arch right there. Next, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the graphite color and just add a few little black strokes through. This isn't something that's necessary. I don't think you have to use three different colors. Anything in hindsight, I probably would have used medium brown and graphite just for a little more color dimension. And I'm just adding a few little strokes through probably about 10 strokes per eyebrow. There we go, now I just have to use a little makeup wipe to remove all of the blue lines of my face. I'll be right back. For the next step was obviously to wipe the lines off your face, but I would recommend doing all of your, doing your brows before all of your makeup if you are going to use a darker colored pencil. If not nude, just kind of buffs into the skin pretty easily. Definitely, definitely set your face with a makeup spray i feel like this just helps the brows to adhere to the skin a lot more uh, these brows are 24 hour wear i found that you can touch them but if you really get in there and smudge them they will smear off just if your face is a little bit oilier so make sure you set it I like the Urban Decay All Nighter. Well, there you go, guys. That is brows built from scratch. Like I said at the beginning, I do microblading. So this is the technique that I use when my client has little to no eyebrow on the face. So I find that it's very easy with this to make them a lot more symmetrical as well. I know a lot of you are going to be asking why the hell would I shave off my eyebrows and I really don't have a great answer for that. I just did it because I wanted my makeup look to look better for the Kat Von D anniversary party. I was doing the bleached eyebrows and I wanted it to be more of a flat, sleek brow rather than a bleached, fluffy brow. So I shaved them off. It is something that I can do every now and then for an occasion. I wouldn't recommend doing it over and over because it can affect the direction that your hair grows. It won't ever make your hair stop growing, but I've found that sometimes they grow a little more straight out rather than laying flat if you do repetitively shave your eyebrows off. If there is anyone that's out there that doesn't have very much eyebrow, 
due to some kind of health condition. I hope that this has been helpful for you. I know that this is a little bit more of a complicated process to go through every single day, but once you do it a few times, you can kind of guide where to put the brows on the face. So I would really, really love it if that technique has been helpful for some of you that don't have much hair in that area. Going back to the products that I use, I do absolutely love these Kat Von D brows and I'm not just saying that because I work for the company. I have had a love-hate relationship with Dip Brow. In the past, uh, I always felt like it was just too much. This consistency is kind of it's a little bit thinner but it's very opaque still so you can build upon it and work with it a lot more the number 70 brush if you don't have it already you absolutely must go out and buy this brush it is so so teeny tiny so if you want those wispy hair strokes there is no other brush at all that I have found that is as slim as this. And because it is a fur-free synthetic brush, you will find that it's not going to splay out like some of the other natural hair brushes as well. So definitely recommend this brush a hundred times over. So as you can see, my face isn't very symmetrical. One of my eyes is a lot higher up than the other. You do have to tweak this method a little bit. Just keep looking in the mirror and just do what feels right for your face. This is kind of a ratio method, but no one's face is symmetrical. I can't say no one because I think Halle Berry's face is symmetrical, but not many people's faces are going to be symmetrical. So just do do the measurements and then do what feels right to you as well. Always there's that golden saying, brows are meant to be sisters, not twins. Uh, obviously if we're drawing them on, we can make them as close as possible as we can. So please, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or found any part of it helpful. And make sure you subscribe if you would like to see more vegan and cruelty free makeup and beauty tutorials. Um, I'm working on a fashion lookbook for you guys coming very, very soon. So I will see you guys for my next video. Thanks always for tuning in. See ya.